Howdy, kids of faith. Hey, my name is Stuart Chapman, but all my friends call me Stu, and I am the new children's pastor at Faith Church, and I cannot wait to hang out with you guys soon. Currently, me and my family, we live in Texas, but we will be moving to the Kent area in a matter of weeks. And, and as you already know, Kids of Faith has some of the very best leaders and volunteers, and they have done a fantastic job during this 2020 season by coming up with creative ways to help all of us better understand God and His Word. And I am so excited that you guys are joining us today because one of those leaders will be helping us understand the Ten Commandments. In fact, hey, why don't we go ahead and pass it on to one of those leaders right now. Good morning, Kids of Faith, and welcome to a brand new series that I'm so excited to start with you this morning. Our series is called Road Trip. Now, if you remember, we were talking about God's people, the Israelites, and how they were in Egypt and slaves in Egypt, and then how they left Egypt. And last week, we left you off with the story of how God provides for them and how God helps us help other people. And now this week we're starting a brand new series because we're actually going to start talking about these stops on the journey that the Israelites were on. And so what I want to do now is I want to get you in the mood of journeying. And so I want to ask you this question. Have you ever been on a road trip? And really here's the other questions that I would ask is if you've been on a road trip or never been on a road trip, uh, if you were to leave on a road trip today, where would you want to go? Maybe you are an outdoors person and you would want to go to Yellowstone or you'd want to go down to Yosemite National Park in California. Or maybe you are looking for some fun and you want to go to Disneyland or even all the way to Disney World. You want to go have some fun somewhere or just Silverwood over in Idaho. What about this? Maybe you are somebody who's got a grandparent or family member that's far away and you're like, I would love to go visit them. If you could go anywhere on a road trip, where would you go? And now my second question is, what would you bring? Not what would you bring for the destination, but what would you bring for the road trip? Now, I don't know about you, but I've been on a lot of road trips in my day, and here's what I know. I know that snacks are important, and my personal favorite road trip snack is Cheez-Its. I love Cheez-Its. They're amazing. They're my favorite road trip snack. I love to grab some for the journey. Uh, you know that drinks are important or maybe you would bring a pillow because you're like my wife who likes to fall asleep on a good long road trip. Somebody gave me this pillow pet. It felt fitting for this video. And so what is it for you that you're going to bring? Maybe you bring games or maybe you pack a, a Game Boy or Nintendo Switch nowadays. Come on, Jake, get with the picture. Nintendo Switch is way better. But whatever it is, maybe you bring something with you on this road trip. It'd be really fun if you want. You could pause this video right now and talk with your family or even your siblings about where you would go if you could go anywhere on a road trip and what kind of things you think are essential to a road trip journey. Now, here's what I want to do this morning, is I want to dive into God's Word. Now, the first stop on the Israelites' journey was a mountain. They opted to go into the wilderness, right? And they stopped at a mountain called Mount Sinai, where they met with God. Actually, Moses met with God. And uh, what's interesting is God gave them the Ten Commandments. And we're actually going to hang out the rest of this series on the Ten Commandments. The Israelites are in the wilderness. They have been journeying on this road trip, and their stop is... Uh, we're at Mount Sinai where they get the Ten Commandments. Now, what happens when we hear about the Ten Commandments is this. Oftentimes we feel like, man, God just gives us rules. He's, he's a fun, he just takes fun away. He, he's angry at us for something. But I think God gave us the Ten Commandments for a totally different reason. And so what I want to do is I want to invite you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse number 32, and we can see why God gave the Ten Commandments. And it starts with this. It says, So Moses told the people, remember Moses is leading God's people and speaking on behalf of God, You must be careful to obey all the commandments of the Lord your God, following his instructions in every detail. Now this is why, verse 33, Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Why would we follow God's commands? Because then you will live a long and prosperous life in the land that they're about to enter, right? And so for you and I, we follow God's command because God knows how life 
was created to be. And so he gives us instructions on how to live, not because he's angry, but because he loves us and cares about us and wants us to have a long, healthy life in this world, right? And then what we've got is actually another verse that I, I, I want to share with you. It's, it's Psalms uh, chapter 19, verse number 7. So it's uh, a little ways over, about halfway through your Bible, and verse 7 says this. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The, the, the decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. And then we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments, and verse A talks about God's commandments. The commandments of the Lord are right bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear, giving insight for the living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true, each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. And so what the Bible is telling us is God's guidance for our life is so good for us. And so we need to lean in and trust God. And so now with the rest of this morning, what I want to do is I want to start looking at the Ten Commandments. Now, maybe you've never read the Ten Commandments, but here's what I want to do. If you've got a Bible, turn to them. They're in Exodus chapter 20. Verse 1 and 2 set up the commandments, and then verse 3 and 4 are where they begin. Today, we're only going to look at verse 3 and 4 because we want to talk about the first two commandments. The first two commandments are kind of different than the rest because they're all about how you and I relate to God. And so here's what we see in Exodus chapter 20, verse number three. You must not have any other God but me. Verse number four, you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. And that one kind of continues telling you how you're not supposed to bow down to anything other than God. But here's what we want you to know. Because the first one says this, you're not supposed to have any God but the one true God, right? Especially at this time, there was all kinds of gods. People worshipped all kinds of different things and animals. And actually in our world today, people do that too. It kind of seems silly when you really start to talk about it. But some of them even would worship the moon or the sun. And they would worship all these different things. And it wasn't uncommon for people to just add a new God to the mix of gods that they worshipped. And the God of heaven, the one that had provided for Israel, the one that provides for you and I, the one that loves us and cares for us and gives us uh, life and gives us the word of God so we know how to live and so we know how to relate to God, that God, he goes, yeah, don't add anybody to the mix. I'm good enough for you. I'm the one true God and worship me only. And then he throws out the second idea. Don't try to make any image that looks like me. That's kind of what an idol is. And don't make something a God. That's another version of an idol. And so what I would encourage you to do this week is this. I would encourage you to write down maybe a list of the things that are important to you, whether that be things that you do or things that you own or even people in your life. And then I would take an assessment of that list and go, where do they fall on my order? I think it's pretty easy for us to have a, a, somebody who that we, we idolize or that we put in the place of God. Or maybe you've got your first phone and you've got games and whatever else on your phone. Or maybe you don't have a phone yet, but you've got a game system or a computer that you spend more time with than you do with anything else. Or maybe, probably not for you quite yet, but I know for the adult world, um, that, that uh, a thing called money really steps in and starts taking over as God in their life. And maybe that's true too in your life. But what are the things that you put out that you go, man, these things are so important to me. Now, the good news is video games aren't bad and money isn't bad and people aren't bad. But what does happen is sometimes we pay more attention to those things. We place those things as a higher importance in our life. And God is going, trust me, if you put me as the most important part in your life, and the rest of it's going to work itself out. I'm going to help you work all of those things out. And actually, the other Ten Commandments kind of help do that for us. And so this week, I'd encourage you, what are some things that are maybe currently an idol in your life? Or what are some things that could potentially become an idol in your life? And talk about the things with your mom and dad or with your friends and siblings and try to find out, man, how can we begin to prioritize God in our home? Because here's what we know, and this is the big idea. We obey God when we put God first. You and I obey God by putting him first. And the rest of life makes more sense when we do that. 
So my hope is that that's an encouragement for you this week. Maybe you had a little bit of fun talking about a road trip and dreaming of something in the future. And coming out of this week, I sure hope that you can find a way to worship God better. Maybe you can spend some time listening to worship music or reading your Bible or introducing some kind of a way that God can take some priority in your life, maybe even over some of the things you value most. Let me pray for you this morning and, uh, and then I'll let you go. God, thank you so much that you give us your word, that you love us so much that you tell us how life is supposed to be lived. God, thanks for giving us road trips and fun things as well so that we can talk about those and we can look forward to them. And God, this morning, can you point out the things in our life that maybe we're giving precedent to rather than you? We love you, Lord. It's your son's name we pray. Amen. Hey, with that, have a great week. Hey, kids of faith. Hey, that was awesome. Now, don't forget to obey God by putting God first. Let, let's work hard on that this week by doing just that, putting God first by obeying him. Also, coming up in just a couple of weeks, we will be inviting all of our elementary kids to Zoops. These are our Zoom small groups where you can connect with your Sunday school leaders as well as some of your buddies from faith. Thanks so much for joining, joining us this week. We hope to see you again, same time, same place, next week. Peace.